you're a wet lab scientist learning some computer programming, which I highly recommend, by the way, especially the language Python. I also recommend that once you get the basics down, you practice by writing functions and things that are going to be useful for you in the lab. So this is a lot more fun than, say, analyzing pedal sizes and Titanic passengers, which is what most of the examples you see are, and it can come in really handy, such as like when you're trying to plan out a bunch of experiments here last week of your postdoc and your brain's really exhausted and then your current self is thanking your past self for writing a bunch of functions to do things like dilution calculations, mass to molar, um, and this sort of thing. So here are some Python practice problems for people more familiar with pipetting. Some of the basic things that you, I, you can try out are doing things like mass to moles. Um, can you convert from, given a molecular weight and a mass, convert how many moles is that? And then takes things a step further and go from like weight volume to molarity and from molarity to weight volume. Figure out how much volume you need to dilute a certain mass in in order to get to a certain molarity. Or just to figure out um, the mass that you need for a certain volume at, to get a certain molarity. You can also do like C1V1 equals C2V2. So you can make a function that'll do that for you. Um, yeah, sorry, too much rhyming. Told you, exhausted brain. But basically, you can write these functions to do these things for you, and this is going to help you learn to code, and it'll also come in handy. Although I'm not saying that you shouldn't learn how to do these calculations yourself, you certainly should, but it's nice to have that little like sanity check to make sure that all your calculations were correct. So those are some of the basic things, and then you can really start taking things up a notch and combining these functions and combining um, all sorts of different things to say, give it a list of ingredients and stock concentrations and your final concentrations that you want and write like a buffer, um, a buffer brewer function that's going to then give you a table telling you how much of each different component to add. Now, when you're doing these calculations, when you're making the functions to do these calculations, along the way, you're going to realize that you need to actually have other functions in there as well, and other things like this, like you might need to convert between units, so doing metric conversions, going from micromolar to millimolar to liter, maybe taking a list of values in different units and then converting them so that they're all in the same unit so that you can do those concentration calculations. Um, you can also, what I like find helpful for making the output prettier and more convenient for what you're doing is be able to specify whether you want like a specific type, if you want to convert it to a specific unit. So say you want everything in microliters or you want it to decide for you so that it, if you take a number, it'll convert it into the most like best form, the form that avoids having decimal points and this can make it more convenient if you see something you have a value with like a bazillion zeros and you're like ah what is this really convert it to something like micromolar that then you can then figure out and be able to think through so these are just a few examples of the types of things that you can do and when you're doing this you it's easiest typically to start by practicing outside of any sort of function just do it like command just do it on in the script um, itself and this will help you debug it and things like this. Once you get things working, then go ahead and write a function that'll do it for you. You can then collect all of those functions into a single Python file and import that file into other Python um, files. And Py in, I use Jupyter Notebook. You can import it into your notebook and even give it a short name when you import it, more on importing functions and packages and other posts, but then you can actually use those functions when you're in different files and be able to do these calculations. And so this is just um, a few examples of things that you can do to help get you started. And remember along the way, you're probably going to figure out that you're going to need extra things to add in order to make everything compatible. Maybe there are functions that you want to add to make your output prettier or more formatted or things like this. If you run into places when you don't know what to do, which happens to me all the time, Google. There's a bunch of like free resources out there and people often are asking questions on like Slack exchange um, and you find some example code. Of course, it won't be exactly what you want, but hopefully it's enough that then you can use it as sort of inspiration to adapt that code to what you want to do. So I, speaking of example code, I will post um, some of the functions that I've written and like my buffer brewer and all that stuff. 
I don't want you to just rely on using this. Like I'm not the best coder at all. There's probably way better ways to do this sort of thing, but just so that you can see, like if you get stuck trying these out, you can see how somebody else might do it. Um, and hopefully this will give you some inspiration to write your own functions and do this sort of thing. But remember, really try it out yourself first because this is how you're going to be learning. And so I learned so much when I was just writing these functions and now I'm making use of them um, to design my experiments. So speaking of those experiments, it's off to those experiments because although yes, I am learning some computer programming and I have been learning some computer programming, I'm really a pure pipette girl um, at heart. So yeah, off to pipetting. <laughs>